Welcome to Movie R. Welcome back. Uh, this week is an explosive episode. It's going to be soft and hot. Uh, it's going to flow and it's going to have a lot of heat. What are we talking about? Time Up Volcano, 1997, Tommy Lee Jones, War Machine. You'll find out what I'm talking about. And uh, John, what do you say? Yeah, we just got a lot of things to show you. It's really going <laughs> to, uh, it's really going to rock. It's going to really, uh, it's it's really good. a magnitude of jokes coming at your way. Um, you're gonna <laughs> dioxide with laughter. So, anyways, uh, there's a there's actually is a lot of a lot of things a lot of things a lot of things to show you throughout this clip. A lot of things are happening at the end. We're gonna be talking about the very end of the movie where actually they figure out what to do to stop the volcano in L.A. Let's check it out. Okay. Patrick, what are you doing? That's the outtake. <laughs> Great. I'm just gonna start the thing with you. <laughs> Woo! Okay, here we go. All right, he's telling that one construction guy what time it is. Okay, officially the police were putting in there, and I don't know how. <laughs> I All right, where's Waldo? The Can you see Waldo? I don't Ooh. see him. There's Oh, there she is. Well, Dean. Okay. Can we just stop here for a second? Volcanoes, volcano, volcanic ash, rather, is not like ash in wood. It's like fiberglass. It's, it's ash from rock. It's toxic. And, and the expert who knows this is like one of like, I don't know, like probably 50% of the crowd who's just hanging out, breathing it in. If anything, she'd be wearing masks. Anyways, the bother. Wait, also, construction worker in that picture, he'd be wearing a mask. The doctor is wearing a mask. Hey, at least he knows what he's doing. Yep. Half of the people in the crowd would be like, well, I saw in CDC six months ago that volcanic ash actually doesn't actually help out with masks. Well, John, this is the late 90s. No one used the internet like that. <laughs> well, I, I called the CDC six months ago. <laughs> I wrote a letter. I, wrote, I like okay. how everyone says they're ready. They would actually go around and actually ask every person beside by one. Hey, he's still jackhammering into the ground, causing all of this havoc, obviously. Gonna blow. Worst part. Wait for it. Uh. It's like when soup erupts in a microwave after being cooked too high for too long at our avenue most of you don't know this guy patrick and i do super cool guy uh this is kevin coleman if, <laughs> if you don't know kevin coleman is the guy back at the oc secretly actually moving everything around because he was a resource unit leader i like how actually in the eoc everybody stops actually what they're doing when the major event happens because they actually need to catch up of like what's actually happening and that's that's pretty real this part's brutal okay patrick a lot is happening in that scene we have uh, can you just do a i mean there was so much going on can you just do a very quick recap of what's going on in that scene for us Wow. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so Tommy Lee Jones makes sure that uh, the the construction guys know there's a, there's a timeline, or that at least he can read his watch. He mm -hmm. then picks up a jackhammer and proceeds to cause an earthquake, which then causes uh, <laughs> the Where's Waldo scene to erupt uh, in complete chaos. At which point, uh, the police leave two of their own in a, in a parking garage, or it looks like a cave under the city. Uh, which then uh, the volcano decides that it's angry that, that people are starting to get, that the chaos is starting to turn to order and it starts shooting fireballs at people. Uh, and then from there, what happens from there? I think that's, I think well, it starts fighting the, back. The best foreshadow ever of we're done here. Immediately, we're done here. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> Uh, yeah. My my favorite thing is the 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 so many hats that the uh, that Tommy Lee Jones incident commander is wearing. 
he's he was at the EOC at the beginning of the movie. He's leading the EOC. He's the boss of the EOC. EOC. Then he it, he like he fulfills every single role. And you're welcome. That is emergency management. Um, okay, so let's talk about what's real, what's fake here, because a lot's going on. Um, okay, first of all, a scale of one to ten, Pat. Uh, how real is this scenario? Uh, as far as there being a, I mean, I thought certain parts of it were more realistic, and other parts were fake. Instead of just judging the whole thing, uh, like the medical, the medical scene with all the I mean, somehow there was an influx. Maybe it was outside a hospital. That would make sense. Doctors and nurses evacuating a hospital and evacuating mm -hmm. their patients. Yeah. But there also being a bunch of uh, for, uh, not search and rescue, but uh, first responders there as well. All, everyone kind of trying to figure out who's who. It wasn't organized at all, but maybe they never practiced an earthquake scenario or a volcano scenario. So they never had to evacuate the hospital because of an earthquake or a volcano. So you got to... Uh, LA would practice, have to practice uh, uh, at least an earthquake scenario. Yes, but maybe on a tabletop or a drill, not necessarily a full scale for a hospital and actually bringing people outside. Fair enough. You know, putting them in yeah. dangerous situations. So that part may be more realistic with all the chaos of people trying to help other people um, heal or at least get triaged. That area seemed like a triage area. Uh, but there just seem to be like doctors and nurses all over the place, uh, which could be realistic. But <laughs> you know what? That that scene is mayhem for a lot of reasons. I'm going to say that's pretty unrealistic because they are several days into this event now. And to think that they are going to either do triage right outside of the hospital or that like everybody in the hospital mostly were able to walk. Did you I notice that? This, like, I think this all happened on the same day. Didn't it? Or is this the day? Or this, this is, the is day at the very end of the movie. So after it, oh, maybe it's the day. We've already after, been yeah. tracking this for a couple of days now. Yeah, you're right. Um, yeah. So I, I'm gonna say I'm just gonna go out on a limb here. I'm gonna say it's pretty unrealistic. I'm gonna say maybe a four out of ten because some oh, element together. Yeah, like the the SWAT, the SWAT not having enough people to do the ordinance so they're just going to literally grab an emergency man or just grab somebody and say hey can you can you jackhammer this into the ground and put some tnt there i feel like i feel like that just wouldn't happen that's just not gonna happen um i feel like triage outside of, directly outside of a hospital in an earthquake they would have a different evacuation zone I don't know. There's like a lot of things happening here where I'm like, uh. well, maybe they were in the process of getting that done, but that scene was just everybody clumped together, trying to triage, trying to just heal people right there in the, in the parking lot. I assume yeah. it's a parking lot. Um, an archeologist right in the middle of it for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Like the, I get people wear many hats in a, in chaos and that, Okay, that's why you get like an extra two points there. But they like lost like six points when I saw this happening during the earthquake part of the volcanic eruption. Like I'm done. <laughs> you're not you're not putting that you're not putting that cable into the team. Like that's not. So okay. Um yeah, not very not big. very realistic. Not very very realistic, but uh, the elements of people not knowing what to do when they're not used to a specific disaster type or not wanting to believe it's X. You know, they always want to like pair it off to something else. A good example is the earthquake that happened in DC, what, 2011 or 2012? Um, where like they did, there was a new fault line. Like they, they weren't aware of the fault line. And so schools were damaged. Uh, the Washington Monument was damaged. Um, and people just really didn't know what to do. So, okay, like things can happen. Um, even like geo geological events can happen that people just aren't tracking. 
I get that. That's why they get like four. Um, but they still fail, though. I mean, that's just that's just crazy. Oh yeah, well, in all these disaster movies, you got the the director of FEMA or the director of the emergency management organization who's out there in the field, who's the hero, who's the, doing the life saving issues, who's helping be the operator, who's being one of the uh, field reps or the field guys. Yeah, uh, which they wouldn't be. I don't know if <laughs> I could see you doing it, Pat. I could, you know. Uh, sometimes you gotta take. Sometimes you gotta take things into your own hands. You know. Hey, that's actually very real. How many times have uh, people just not not able to move fast enough or think fast enough on their feet where you just like, okay, I just have to do this. You don't have time to explain it to people. Um, like there's a scene in the movie where um, like they're stuck between a flipped over fire truck and the lava coming at them. Somehow he's that close to the event. And he, I don't, again, I don't know why that's happening. But there's like 40 firefighters there, and like he has to tell them to move the crane over. Like they're just hanging out. Like, what, what are 40 firefighters doing and not helping? I don't know. So, none of them think to like climb on top of the bus and maybe pull them over the bus, the bus they just helped flip. The- <laughs> Yeah, exactly. But again, a hey, no discredit to real firefighters because real firefighters would be all over it and wanting to help people out. Award-winning author Dr. Heather Beale creates books that explains and prepares children for emergencies. Movies about disaster are entertaining, living through disasters or not. Teaching children about these events is super important. So whether you need to talk about tornadoes, elephant wind, or earthquakes, tummy rumble quake, or fire drills, burnt toast, and snow cream cones, this amazing book series for small children by Train for Safety Press is worth reading. It's offered in multiple languages, and you can pick up a copy today by clicking on the link below. All we can do is get out of this place. Oh yeah, you mean run for the hills and hide? That's right. I can't do that, not ever. There's there's one good real element that a lot of movies don't show is what an actual EOC looks like ton of computers a lot of people trying to get situational awareness on it there's usually a big screen or multiple screens of like showing um active news feeds that kind of stuff and trying to coordinate all the different groups so that there's going to be somebody trying to coordinate swat getting there there's going to be someone trying to you know help out with sheltering operations evacuations of the hospital uh, getting uh, emergency supplies there so yeah that's the work right the work is that EOC, I'm sorry, we keep saying EOC, Emergency Operations Center, and then just a ton of coordination happening off-site in a very safe location. Clearly, that EOC was not being impacted, so it had to be way off-site from yeah, right. where this was happening. All the information at the EOC, uh, it's like a center point for all the information. So uh, maybe somebody else could get the information from lots of other people, but it's convenient that it's all in one spot. And usually each uh, department in the city will brief out and explain what they're doing at a morning and evening meetings there in the EOC to make sure that things are on track. We're solving problems. What's the guy who uh, uh, plays Kevin Coleman? The, uh, the guy's Don also Cheadle. what Don Cheadle. No, no, no. That's, that's not his name. What's his name from uh, Marvel? War Machine. War Machine. Yeah, <laughs> it's way cooler than any like real name. Um, should we start calling Kevin War Machine now? Yeah, um, we probably should. Yeah. Actually, I think, I think <laughs> we should. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, Kevin, another shout out to you, man. Uh, hopefully you're doing well. Actually, well, Kevin well. Coleman has been on the Disaster Tough podcast before. So if you want to know who we're talking about, brilliant guy uh, that we both worked with before. Um, you should check out his episode. Nice plug for Disaster Tough. Um, okay, so we, we've talked about what's real, what's fake. We kind of give you kind of an overview of what's happening. That coordination happens at an EOC and how an incident commander can be called out to the field with their SME, with their subject matter expert, the geologist, and uh, can get looped into operations in a way that can happen. Um, let's talk about a public service announcement, our PSA. How do you avoid stupid in this kind of situation. Hey, swing us the other way. I'll ask him when we get out of there. 
Yeah, if you live near it, if you're in one of those apartment buildings that the uh, lava is going towards, uh, evacuate, leave. The whole thing will catch on fire, uh, just like the movie. I mean, it's 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 completely improbable or impossible in that area. But uh, but if you if you see something fire coming towards your building because another building is on fire right next to yours, evacuate and leave. Get in your car and drive the opposite direction. Don't wait till it's impacted. And and you actually have some good intel of like what happens to buildings too, right? Like not even just like the lava hitting it. Buildings can get destroyed, right? By other Oh, yeah, that- yeah, yeah. There's something called sulfur dioxide that uh, volcanoes let off. That's uh, also referred to as SO2. And it'll deteriorate the, uh, it's happened in, it happens in Hawaii whenever there's a volcanic eruption. It'll, it's in the air and it'll deteriorate any metal. So any metal that's in the house, any part of the house that's made of metal, it'll start deteriorating it, whether it's the roof or the beams that keep up the roof or your microwave or any of your appliances or your electronics inside will become deteriorated because of SO2. So it's sulfur dioxide and that's uh, every, every volcano. That's what they experience in Hawaii a lot. Yeah, I would say, I would say my other PSA that I would add on to that is that mask thing that we were calling out earlier. Like this isn't like, again, this isn't like wood. It's not like your campfire ash, which it can still be pretty harmful, obviously, but, uh, cover, cover as much as you possibly can. Um, that's, that's basically fiberglass that you're breathing and getting in your eyes. It's extremely itchy. It's really bad for your lungs. The, uh, SO2 is actually really bad for your lungs as well. So anytime that you're having to deal with this, or you live in that kind of region, just be aware of that. Like that ash is really dangerous. It's not like snow. I, w- I once heard somebody compare it to like, oh, it looks like snow is on the ground. Well, that snow can kill you. So we talked about volcano today. We had a lot of fun talking about volcano. This scene that we, we watched at the end, quite hilarious, but we're very proud of Tommy Lee Jones representing the best emergency manager of all time by integrating emergency, uh, you know, emergency operations at the EOC by integrating with the firefighters, by integrating with SWAT and setting off ordinances by, you know, <laughs> helping out literally with everybody. Yeah, I think but, he was, uh, John, I think he was promoted after this to the men in black, actually. You know what? That's why I never heard about. If you like this episode, if you like our a review of Volcano, if you have ideas to how to protect a Volcano, if you live in a region like that, and you have some ideas, or you think this was kind of a fun take on the movie Volcano, uh, make sure you check out our other movie after action reviews and also check out the readiness lab of which we're a part of. There's a lot of cool shows on there. We've talked about uh, disaster tough podcasts of which I host, but we also have other really great shows by other great hosts. So make sure you check out the readiness lab and we'll see you next time. Peace. Peace in the middle East. <laughs> That's getting cut. <laughs> um, <laughs> Although I do yeah. want it. I do want that to happen. Movie R. Movie R. Movie R. <laughs> so, was, this the, was this the prequel, John, to Men in Black? I mean, did he prove himself? I mean, it did seem like the volcano was shooting rocks at, fiery rocks at the humans, setting them on fire and killing them. I think maybe that that volcano was an alien. This is a really dumb theory. <laughs> I think that that's it. Yeah, and Men in Black. This is the this is the prequel to Men in Black. The prequel to Men in Black. Um, the origin story of yeah, K's K's real origin K, story. K's real origin. What's his character's name in this movie? Crap! <laughs> we don't even. <laughs> don't... We never remember people's names. All I can think of, um, yeah, is Men in Black. I don't know. Uh, his okay. hat. His hat said Dem, so he could be. His name could be Dem. Department of Emergency Management. <laughs> um, Kay's real origin story wasn't about his uh, Men in Black. They 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 do the thing right in the 1950s where he sees the aliens. Yeah, yeah. I mean that. Maybe I mean, as that Men in totally... Black, he was uh, he was placed in Los Angeles. Because yes, and there's just a part of the story that they didn't tell, and that's his short stint as the emergency manager of Los Angeles, in which there was a volcano monster. And they tried to model him after me, clearly. You weren't 
when you, when you weren't alive? What? In 1997, I wasn't what? <laughs> alive? I was alive when for we several alive, years. It's hard. It's hard to do. It's hard to remember in the moment. It's hard to just yeah. do it. So um, It's hard? Like rock hard? Uh, I mean, lava isn't really that hard. It's pretty soft, right? But it's pretty hot. It's super hot. It's soft, but it's hot. Get ready for a soft and hot episode. <laughs> Movie R. Movie Today. R. Okay. 